on top ten. I know the name of our show. That changes weekly. Uh, this is the one day sh- what, what, one day. <laughs> it's the Wednesday show, and I'm your host as always, Chad Porto. And joining me is the glorious one, Marcus Green. We're here to talk to you about top ten TNA promos. Marcus, was this a hard list for you? Not. Uh, no, not really. Not really. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of my my picks immediately rang to my head. Um, and it's funny because now thinking about it, there there's one particular name who I'm surprised didn't come up on the list. But the reason why I didn't come up on the list is because I mean it, these to me actually um, have more significant meaning. But uh, how about you? Uh, it was when half of them were picked by you. <laughs> But I was able to rediscover some classic ones, and at the end of the at the end of it, I was really happy that I uh, had to go a little bit deeper because these aren't the definitive top tens; these are just ten of the best. So, with that being said, I'll kick yeah. us off with number ten, Marcus. This one I already sent to you on Twitter. It and and to be clear, these aren't technically promos necessarily, as they are promos vignettes, talking segments. I think is a more accurate term. Uh, and this uh, talking segment was the EC3 and Rockstar Spud Hunt of Willow from 2014. And it was just absolutely amazing with Spud with the backwards binoculars and Spud, you know, at noon going, Sir, it's almost nightfall. We should probably get going. And EC3 is like, Spud, it's only noon. And then at one point, you know, Spud's like, we never leave a man behind, sir. You Wait up, my leg, sir. And at one point, Spud gets kidnapped, and EC3 actually has a really, really strong bonding moment by himself where he's like, you're right, Spud. No one gets left behind. And EC3 goes off charging after Willow, kind of making EC3 seem like less of a douche, which was nice. I liked it. It was solid stuff. Loved it. Uh, this was at the, uh, the, the, the turning point of when TNA really kind of fell into the doldrums because of mismanagement. Uh, Marcus, you're up next. Who'd you got? For me, I'm going to kick it off with an absolute classic, an absolute um, a brain constrictor. Um, this is a universally uh, known promo. I'm going to say beloved because it's an interesting one. But I'm going to kick it off with uh, Big Papa Pump himself, Scott Steiner, talking about that legendary Steiner math promo that he cut. Um, this is it, and I'm, I'm going to say this uh, a couple times with a couple on this list. This is just something you have to go see. Just just go to Google or go to YouTube, type in Steiner Math, and just, when it comes up, just click on it. It is nothing else I can tell you besides Scott Steiner is a force in himself long before he gets into the ring. And if he has a mic in his hand, this is ain't this ain't no ricochet. You, <laughs> you need to listen. It might not make any lick of a damn sense, but it's worth the listen. And this was... <laughs> Steiner math. This, this was something. Must be Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Ricochet. My number, my second pick or number eight overall is going to be the Aces and Eights funeral. It's not the best fake oh. funerals this company's ever had, but Mr. Anderson popping out of a coffin. Kind of reminds you why he was signed in the first place. I, you know, uh, if we talk about top ten most underrated TNA wrestlers of all time, next list, uh, not this week, but next week, uh, Anderson's definitely going to make it because when he was given a microphone, he was stellar. The, oh yeah, he was he was next. Up. Between that and him being a legitimate dead ringer for um, Steve Borden when he cosplayed his Sting when he jumped Sting, yeah, some of the stuff like. He, it's another person that is probably not going to get enough credit for some of the stuff that he did in that company. That was great. All right, Marcus, who'd you got next? Yeah, for me, my next pick is um, um, a promo that featured, you know, a guy on the mic that we don't usually praise on the mic. You know, that's not what we praise him at. I'm talking AJ Styles when a uh, promo where Fortune leaves a mortal. And styled. I mean, this is this is on this uh, infamous dark period that me and Chad talk about so much. Uh, that stretched over a number of years, where um, it's known as the, the Hogan Bischoff era. But this specifically was memorable because this was legitimately the TNA homegrown talent, the best of the homegrown talent, led by AJ Styles. 
saying, like, just really giving Eric Bischoff the business of all the crap and all the L's that he's ever brought to wrestling, including the one that he was currently bringing to Impact, and saying they was done with it and they was go, you know, get rid of him or die trying. And uh, like I said, it was an even better moment because AJ was actually quite competent on the mic here. And even though he ended it with saying, I'm going to stick my foot so far off your, your butt, you're going to be uh, spitting out shoelaces, which is about as PG as you can get. Um, it was good, man. It was it was some good stuff. So, you know. Can't who doesn't love fortune? Right. And that yeah. entire segment was peak, by the way. So like, go watch all of it. Just, just all of it. it. It's all so good. Uh, let's go with... Why can I not move forward? Damn it. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Uh, the little thing he's gone. Oh, I'll just fucking X out of it. Who cares? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Gotta bring the photos back up. Uh, what are we on? Uh, well, that'll work. All right. Anyway, so we're, we're continuing on after that slight hiccup. Uh, Next up for me, I think we're on number five or number six, whatever, uh, is actually another Mr. Anderson promo. Marcus, this one's like, this one sealed it for me. This is his greatest promo of all time. It's Sacrifice 2020, uh, 20, God damn it, Sacrifice 2010. He's there with Christy Hemi, and he keeps calling her Kirsten or, or, or Katie, and she's just staring at him. And he's like, hey, Kirsten. Do you think I could be a Jeff Hardy fan? Do you think I could be a creature of the night? I could sit there in the front row, my face painted up, little gimmicks on my forearms, pantyhose in my hair going, let's go, Hardy. It's just, it, <laughs> what's that? Pantyhose in my hair. Too. Right. So it's, just, it's, it's, it's easily his best promo ever. And I mean that in any company. Uh, it's, it's solid. It does the job. It puts him over as a dick because that's what he's trying to be. And just, you know, it just, it starts great. It ends great. And it shows you what he can really do when, when he's motivated. Uh, and unfortunately part of the issue with Anderson was at times you could tell he wasn't motivated. Maybe it's because of the content he was being given. You know, I'm not really sure Sam Shaw is going to get anyone's creative juices going, but at the end of the day, it was a hell of a promo and getting to see Christy Hammy there. Uh, I loved it. So, you know, thumbs up Marcus next one. Uh, this one was a, a particular favorite for me. I just went back. I'm, by the way, going through these uh, this list, I went back and looked at all these promos to enjoy them again. And this next one for me is one coming off of a pick on my list uh, of the top Impact World title wins after Aries toppled uh, Bobby Roode at Destination Nation 2012. There's uh, the post show. Or should I say the, the following Impact when Aries got to make his address, uh, Bobby Roo came out and he just, <laughs> this, I think this was a perfect example of why I loved his run so much um, as champion. He just came out and he just emoted. He didn't even, he said one thing. <laughs> he said one thing, but he just came out. He was just on the mic. He was like, what do you got to say? <clears throat> he was just making, no, he just freaking, it, and he just said one word. Fluke! It, it, it was just, it, it, it was great. Like, this was a top, rude, all-time moment in his career to me, specifically in Impact. But this was, this was, uh, this was great. So I properly did my job this week, and I, I started getting all this information and photos, grabbing everything about two to three hours before we started recording. I didn't know which rude promo it was, so I had to, you know, j- jump in and, and find it. So when I'm watching this promo, I'm getting angry watching it because I just need to hear him say fluke so I know this is the right promo. And for three minutes, he's like, yeah. and then he walks away and he's like, and then he walks up and finally goes, fluke. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thank Christ. I thought, it's not that I think about it. It kind of reminds me of sometimes when you do that, <laughs> you're like, really? <laughs> Just oh, on the mic. So, like he was, like he was. There's no better example of it incensed than what he was in that bro. Oh, here we go, Marcus confusing white boys again. <laughs> <laughs> Next one up for me, it's the best funeral of all time. It's the death and burial of Team 3D. The only thing that would have made this like this is like the that that Saturday Night Lights live skit with Christopher Walken. I all I really need is more cowbell. 
All I really needed was more <laughs> Team Canada group unison chanting. When they started talking about why AMW turned heel, they're like, for the money. And then you just hear Team Canada go, money! And then they're like, and for the power. And then Jeff Jarrett's like, for the power, for the power. And then you see Team Canada, power! <laughs> and they got hockey sticks and they're all just screaming like buffoons. You got Eric Young, Petey Williams, Bobby Roode, A1. It's fantastic. Abyss has a thing of, of Kleenexes that he smashes. Gail Kim's doing her fucking nails while she's sitting there in this button-up coat, but her, her, her chest is sticking out. Oh, it just, it's, it's, it's just beautiful. And then, like, the, the sign-in book had, like, the McMahons and, Ke- and like, Kevin Nash. No, the, like, the McMahons and Triple H. And then, like, the, on the way out, they're like, and next week, we're going to be here for the funeral of Kevin Nash. So it was just, everything about it was perfect. I loved it. You, you probably you would need to send out a tweet like, like for as many times as the company almost killed itself, nobody did funerals better than that. <laughs> right, like it's when you know you're gonna die, you seem to have an appreciation for death. <laughs> TNA's like, hey, we're about to die next week. We'll do a funeral segment. That leaves the aces and aces classic. Like for as much as we struggled with that damn group, <laughs> like the funeral was exactly what it what it needed to be. <laughs> Yes, it was. So oh, yeah. damn good. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. Marcus, you're up. Oh, man. Number three. Uh, for me, this next, well, next pick, this uh, number three is also featuring one Bobby Roode, but he's the uh, he's just a participant in this one, man. Um, This is another shout-out to the Stinger. This is Sting dropping a bombshell on B-Roode. Um... This was when Sting, uh, this was Don uh, Bobby Roode's world title win when he was, I guess, teetering on the uh, prospect of retirement, and Roode came to rub it in his face because he was going to 100% take credit for it. And I think this was kind of post all his, like, hard Joker stuff. Mm-hmm. But when he was kind of going back, he was having Joker instances with classic Sting mostly. But this was just... Again, you got to go. There's something you need to watch because, again, Sting is so underrated. You know, obviously he's you know, the in ring stuff is it goes without saying, but his personality with that Joker character and and a lot of the stuff that he did in TNA, but specifically here, him with the face paint and the, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, Bobby. <laughs> Follow the yellow. Bird. Follow the yellow brick road to Mercury Road. I get it's like the 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 freaking cadence and the 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 ovulations of 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 the intensity. It's I mean the man is brilliant. Like he, he does not get enough credit for for that character. Like the whole the the silent crow thing is great, but he was this was peak sting right here for me. This was peak sting. Loved everything about it. That personality is classic, and he does not get enough damn credit for his entertainment value. Mm-mm. So it's ironic that you picked this one because the reason why I thought of, uh, well, you thought of this one, but the, one of the reasons why we started doing top tens was because I saw the uh, the Sting promo f- when he was named quote unquote named the network executive uh, liaisons for Spike TV in twenty, I think it was like twenty eleven, and uh, he came out with the with the Joker face paint when everyone is in the room and like he walked out from behind like a container and he's like. Hello, guys. And he's got like a, a fucking uh, uh, ray, or he's got like a crow with him or something like that. And uh, he's like, Eric, do you like my suit? $10,000 or $3,000. It's Versace. <laughs> and I'm just like, what is this? I've completely forgot about this madness. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons why, why we started doing the, uh, the top tens was, to, was to, to, for that reason. And I think the Joker's thing gets a real, real bad rap because at the time everyone's like, this is dumb. But he was so good. And that's why my favorite and, promo, and it wasn't even the one that you, like, I, as soon as I saw that, it wasn't on the list. And I was like, yes. It was the yeah. progenitor to the Joker Sting promo. And my number one promo is I'm the Stinger, and I'm not done yet. This was the last promo Sting would do before he would descend into madness. Hulk Hogan was screaming yeah. at him, and he said something to the effect like, you know, is this the real Hulk Hogan? Is this the real Terry? And he's like, yeah, it is, brother. You know, I don't want my daughter to... Wait, hang on. Wrong promo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he's like, I don't know what you want, brother. You know, I'm trying to play ball with you. You know, what do you want? 
And then Sting's like, what do I want? What do I want? I'm the Stinger, and I'm not done yet. And then he just like, starts, like, assaulting Hogan, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, well, how old is that? This is nine years ago. I was 24. I was like, yeah, like a little kid. <laughs> Beat up Hulk Hogan. He's a dummy. If you didn't love this version of saying, I don't say this often, all this stuff is subjective, but you, you're full of shit. You, just, yeah. you, you have no eye for entertainment. You have a dark soul, and it's just, you know, like, stupid... Just everything he, I mean, he was on every week. Mm-hmm. Like, he was must see every week. Like, and I'm thinking, because look, I I talk about it all the time, but uh, like, two of my honorable mentions here are going to be that, that Fact of Life segment where, where Eli Drake just went off on EC3. That was great. And the the Sting, 1 3, 1 3, here comes the Stinger, it's going to be showtime. That, but I thought you were going to go with. One of your favorite Joker Sting moments, and you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, because I went back and watched it. One of your favorite Sting songs, "Rising Up to the Challenge of Immortal." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> to be fair, was... any Sting promo is my favorite Sting that, promo. That, that's literally why I put slash every Joker Sting promo. It was just classic. Uh, oh, we might have to like do a that, top that, ten of just Joker Sting promos. <laughs> Frigate, we all we on the we on the trail. Like that moment when he was, what I think he was uh, talking about facing Anderson. And Anderson hauled ass out, of, well, got out of Dodge, and he was talking back and forth with Anderson and hitting Hogan with the bat. As he was like, oh, "Wait a moment, oh. <laughs> oh God, he's so good." Well, Marcus, so good. what's your top pick? Look, man, I had to go with this. This was just under now. I've, I watched this so many damn times. I could probably do it. Um, and this is this is you know all the time another classic moment. And people, if people get this a bad rap again, you're full of it, and you don't deserve to, to, to any real form of true entertainment. <laughs> the t- moment, the promo with Jay Lethal out Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Go look it up if you haven't seen it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Dot, 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 dot. You're welcome. This is, I think, my favorite moment besides the whole thing in general. Uh, And also, uh, like, I know it was hard. It was hard as hell for them guys not to crack. Like, I know a couple of them was corpsing when this was going on. Like, Styles, Kazarian, what, Rude, and, and Desmond Wolf. Yep. Like, I know. I know three of them was like, I know a couple of them had to be corpse and like they just had to do something to react because if they didn't, they would have lost it. But there was a moment during this promo and Jay is just going off. I mean, he is he is in his zone like nothing I've ever seen. And they put the camera on Flair and you just catch him for that slight moment just being a fan of what he's seeing of this kid taking him to town with his own damn gimmick. And it's it's brilliant. It's, it's it's brilliant. The two great of greatest woo offs in the history of, of anything is Jay Lethal, Ric Flair, and a, a computer made version of Ric Flair versus Luke Hang. <laughs> it's great. So that'll do it for this week's top ten or this Wednesday's. We'll come back for Friday with another one. It's top ten TNA Impact Wrestling talents to build around. He's been Marcus Green. I've been Chad Porto. You can find him over at his. Uh, Twitter account at Paradox Kid P A R A D O X K I D, and you can find him oh, at. Oops, sorry, I completely cut you off. <laughs> you good? You can also find him at his other podcast, The True Penny Show, on Twitter at True Penny Show T R U E P E N N Y S H O W. I'm on Twitter at Chad Nerd Corp C H A D N E R D C O R P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Be sure to check out RealNerdCorp.com. Links below in the bottom for all your podcast, uh, uh, Real Nerd Corp, Wrestling Underground, Comic Core needs. We got all sorts of fucking podcasts. Go listen to them. They're free. We try to keep them entertaining. No promises, though. <laughs> so for Mark Green, I'm Chad Porto. Marcus, take it home. Good night, me. 36, 49. All right, so... <laughs>